Hello everyone, thanks for being here. This is Goose Auto Works, and this is what we're doing today. Oh yeah, it's a twofer. All right, everyone, so it's a little bit different today. I got my brother here. Say hi, brother. Hello. And we're gonna be showing you plastic dipping in two different ways. One is gonna be a pre-mixed buy it from the shelf kit and then one is going to be one that we mix here from home so you'll get to see both methods applied how they both turn out side by side and how to mix it at home if that's what you want to do some steps will be the same some steps will be a little bit different uh, but let's go ahead and we'll get into it and show you what you need as far as the things that will be the same both vehicles need to be masked off for anything that you don't want the dip to be on, whether that's wheels, windows, headlights, whatever. So we have a couple different types of masking material, a couple different types of masking tape, and then we actually have a pre-dip spray, which will just help this adhere a little bit better. But um, I'll let you explain kind of what you're doing here. Yeah, so what we're gonna be working with is gonna be three gallons of our base coat, which is gonna be Avalanche Gray. We're gonna be working with three gallons of our top coat, which are gonna be Nardo Gray. And then in the corner over there, we have Shadow Black, which are gonna be used for our rims and our accents. Sounds good. And then for my part, as you may or may not know, I am going to repaint my whole truck at some point properly, but for right now, I'm just gonna plastic dip it so that everything is uniform. And so I just have a straight black. This is something I've had on the vehicle once before. and. Mine I'm going to mix myself. So this is straight from Plasti Dip, full concentrated mixture. And the way that you want to mix this is one part Plasti Dip to one part thinner. So there's a couple of different types that people will use. When I've done it in the past, I've just used one part of the Xylol to one part Plasti Dip. Right now I'm going to work in this VMP naphtha. It's a faster evaporating thinner. So it will kind of give you some flexibility with your flash time. So you can apply other coats quicker without it being runny on you. And the way I'm going to work these two in is I'll do three quarters of that thinner mixture with the Xylol, one quarter of it with the VMP. So it will be a gallon of Plasti Dip, three quarters gallon of Xylol, and then one quart of the VMP. You can play with that mixture as you want. As long as you have one part Plasti Dip, one part thinner, you'll be good to go. So home, what we got going on? So we washed this about 24 hours beforehand. It's been sitting in the garage so it could dry completely. We're gonna apply the Nardo Gray to the base and then on our accent, so our front emblem right here, our rims all the way around, our side emblem right here. We're gonna take off the roof rack and uh, plastic dip that with a shadow black. And then our three emblems on the back. And what we're going to do next is we're going to tape it all. We're going to get everything marked off that we don't want painted right now or plastic dipped right now. And we're going to go ahead and wipe it down with that pre-dip spray. While he's finishing up the last little bit of masking, I'll kind of walk you around, show you what we've done so far. So as you saw, he went and got the headlights and everything in the front. We've just kind of loosely covered up over the wheels. Uh, we'll take those off later to do the actual wheels, but for right now, um, we want to be able to move this around if we have to. And so all the windows and everything, and one thing that's helpful is with the weather stripping around the window, if you open it up and put some tape on the inside and pull it forward and down, you'll pull the seal away from the door jam a little bit. And what that's gonna allow is for paint to actually kind of fall down in between and so when you pull this tape off and that weather strip relaxes back you'll have a nice good edge there instead of something that you know is kind of halfway covered so that's what we've done with these anywhere that there was the weather stripping now on these windows back here that don't have that I've actually left this alone because it is easier just to peel the plastic dip off and let it make its own edge around the glass than if you were to try to tape it off. So just save some time. It still peels nice and clean. And in fact, you are less likely to have something kind of get hung up with the tape or something like that doing it this way. Um, similar idea, 
I decided to leave the tail lights undone. So we'll kind of be able to show you both ways. It's completely covered, completely uncovered. Here we're just going to peel it off. So use your judgment on what you think is best for your application. And then um, again, for here, we've just done the weather shipping. And then for the emblems, what we're going to do, <clears throat> and I'll go into it a little bit more once we actually get there, but we're going to shoot the whole thing in the base color. Then we're going to come back and we're going to come with the black and just kind of dab and hand paint on the face of this. Um, I think it will end up looking like what we want it to look like, but that way we don't risk pulling off the plastic dip underneath by taping it or something like that. Um, and then the roof rack we've pulled off. So it's laying right here. And again, this is gonna get done in black as well. So once that's done, we'll throw it back on there and we're almost ready to start to spray. So this is a sprayer I'm using. It has obviously seen some good use in its life. Um, I'll link this down in the description, but what's important to know about this, whether you get this exact one or one like it, is that this does not have the motor or the turbine attached to the handle. This is a satellite turbine. So basically what that means is this generates all your air. This is all of your motor and everything like that. The air comes through this hose and then sprays through here. The reason why that's important is because all the different solvents that are in this, you don't want anything that's creating small sparks near atomized flammable liquid. So keep these things separate. You'll be in a lot better situation. Cars prepped, wiped down, masked. Uh, we've opened up the cans of the first base coat that we're going to be doing. And so next is just to mix it, strain it, and then we'll spray it. Whenever you dial in your gun to start spraying, there's a couple conditions you want to be sure you have correct. So here, obviously, we are way too close. This is supposed to be a long fan, and it's just kind of a general blob, blob and you can see that it is running. Back here, we're too far back, and even though it gives us a wide spread, what this is going to do is this is going to dry and atomize in the air, and when it lands, it's already dry. So it's going to be rough. It's going to have an uneven texture. It's not going to be what you want. Here, this fan is about six to seven inches away. It will give us a decent coverage. Everything's wet out. There's no dry spots. There's no runny spots. So that's about what you're going to want to look for. And for every pass you do, you're going to want to overlay approximately half of the previous pass and just keep going down like that. So take your time. You'll get it covered. Too far back, it will be dry and rough. Too far in, and you'll have the runs. So another thing that you can have control over whenever you're dialing this in is this dial right here, literally dialing it in. Uh, this will uh, control the amount that you can pull the trigger inward. So right now it's locked all the way and the trigger's hardly moving. So hardly any paint will actually flow. And then if we ramp it all the way to the other side and we pull the trigger, it's all the way down. So you can use that to kind of help give you a guide for how much you're gonna pull the trigger in and out. Here's what we've got so far. This is all the base of the Avalanche Gray. This is how many coats? About three and a half. About three and a half, he says. And so, basically we've got three gallons of the Nardo Gray, but we're probably just gonna go till it gets the coverage that we want. Um, so if we have some left over, we have some left over for touch-ups and whatnot. But 
Now we'll go ahead and start spraying that. So this is how we're looking. It is literally midnight and so we are just gonna kind of wrap up where we are, come back in the morning, do the wheels, emblems, all that stuff. Um, he's just finishing up a little bit of the tear down or demasking I guess. Um, but all in all looks pretty good. Uh, there wasn't anything too difficult being demasked it all came off pretty cleanly but we'll meet you back here in the morning go ahead and finish out the wheels emblems all that good stuff welcome back everyone it is the next day sorry for the Eeyore voice last night absolutely exhausted but we're back at it so he is getting the wheels prepped for the black and I am going to be working on the brakes so while he's doing that I'll be doing this so roof rack gets the black, wheels get the black, and then we'll come back with the emblems as well and get those. But let's go ahead and jump on into it. everyone so my brother actually had to leave to go home he lives in a different city but he's gonna send me some pictures of the whole thing after he finishes the side emblems and everything so as for me it's time to get started on the truck got things masked off pretty much the way that I want um, so now it's just time to actually start to mix up the plastic dip and then we'll go ahead and start spraying So before I walk you guys around and show you the whole truck, I wanted to explain something referred to as wet peel and dry peel. So up on the windshield, for example, I left a gap on the glass where I started masking it off because it's gonna be easier to just peel off excess plastic dip and let it create its own cut line than me painstakingly taping that in. And so in that area, I let it dry. I pull the tape 
with dry plastic dip because I want to peel that off with the tape. Up here in the front, I taped off my grill before I sprayed anything. I wanted to leave that a gloss black. I just I like the contrast between the matte and the gloss. And so this is a wet peel. So what I had to do here is before peeling that tape off, I had to spray all around the edge of it. And that's gonna end up letting you peel that tape with a nice crisp clean line and not be tugging or pulling the dry plastic dip up. So I really like this contrast of the gloss and the matte. The only thing that's bothering me is the headlights right now, but I think I have an idea for that. That's better. All right, it is starting to rain on me, so I'm gonna try to hurry up and wrap this up, or at least move inside. So, speaking of the rain, if I were to do this again, and what I would tell you right now is if you are mixing it at home, just go ahead and do the one-to-one -one of the Plasti Dip and the Xylol. Something I'm noticing when it's raining is it's leaving like streaks and watermarks and things like that. It's something I never noticed the very, very first time I did this, and I did just the plastic dip in the xylol so i'm just gonna go ahead and say do that and you'll be fine um but after filming that last outro this thing is begging for some wheels and tires i know um, it's something that i'm hoping i can do before too long but we will see and then the carbon fiber roof so if you've been following at all that's something that's happening um it's on there right now there's just a little bit of sanding and buffing that i want to do before i get that video finished and released so stick around for that, as well as the lightning front bumper. It is here, it is in, um, here in front of the Mustang. And then the Mustang, um, I'm gonna try to bring it back and do a little bit more stuff with that as well. Um, hopefully incorporate some carbon fiber with it as well, and carbon fiber just in general. Um, I wanna kinda bring some of that into the channel. So if you like this video, if you like some other stuff that's out there and some of these things that I mentioned sound interesting to you, Please go ahead and subscribe, hang around, and uh, hopefully it'll be a good time. And then stick around at the end of this. I got a few outtakes for you guys, but hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything, comment below. I read all that stuff. I try to reply most to everything. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. This is Gusada Works, and this is what we're doing today. And where is my... <laughs>